Jason. Welcome to Liberty Live. Today we want to discuss the ephod, probably one of the arguably most famous garments in the world, also known as the breastplate of Aaron. Now, this garment was commanded by God to and through Moses and his artisans to be made for the high priest of Israel to wear, who was at the time the chief shepherd of the tabernacle, which then became the temple, which then became the church. This is why in Hebrews it says Jesus Christ is the high priest of our confession. Now the high priest in Hebrew is Kohanim Gadol, which means the exalted man, the exalted priest, the high priest, or the one that is risen above the rest for the extent purposes to lead and to serve. Now, the garment you see behind me, called the ephod, also called the breastplate, is actually adorned upon a miel. A miel is this blue garment, which is sleeveless. It has a double lip here so that it doesn't tear. And upon the garment is a uh, three different color embroidered breastplate, uh, like literally like a, a body armor. And it is adorned with 12 precious stones, each bearing one of the tribes of the nation of Israel. Now you also see above it on each shoulder are six tribes on each stone. And this brings a very famous prophecy from Isaiah where it says the government will rest upon his shoulders. Well, the government or the people, the congregation, has to deal with a body of literal people, literal identities, and literal names. So when the literal names of the people are resting on the shoulders, that means the government or the body of people will rest on his shoulders. This is what the prophecy is speaking about concerning Messiah Yeshua, Jesus Christ. Now, each of these stones has a different tribe on it. And I want to read you this example uh, of where this commandment was made. In Exodus 28.4, it says, These garments are the ones they shall make, a breast piece and an ephod and a robe and a tunic of all checkered work, a sash and a turban. They shall make holy garments for Aaron your brother as he ministers to me as priest. In Exodus 28, 6 through 13, they shall also make me an ephod out of gold, blue, purple, and scarlet material, and fine twisted linen, and the work of a skillful workman. It shall have two shoulder pieces joined at its ends, and that they may be joined, skillfully woven together, a band which is on it shall be its workmanship. The same material shall be gold, purple, blue, and scarlet, and fine twisted linen. You shall make two onyx stones and engrave upon them the names of the sons of Israel. Six names on one stone. And six names on the other. According to the order of their birth, as a jeweler engraves a signet. You shall engrave the two stones according to the names of all the sons of Israel. And you shall set them in filigree settings of gold. You shall put the two stones on the shoulder pieces of the ephod. You shall put a tunic on him, girded with the sash, clothed with the robe, which again is called the miel, and the ephod, which he girded the artistic band of the ephod, which is tied to him. And this was commanded to be tied with techelet, blue cords, by golden rings, so that the ephod is actually tied and chained on, worn uh, tightly by the appendage of these chains, and it's to go upon the meal which is blue, speaking that he is robed and or adorned in his righteousness. Now, <clears throat> there's an interesting scripture here in 1 Samuel 2.28. Did I not choose them from all the tribes of Israel, my priest, to go up to the altar, to burn incense and to carry an ephod before me? Did I not give your house, the father, all the fire offerings and the sons of Israel? And he's basically speaking about the priesthood that was given through the Levites. Now, the word Levite means joined. It literally means joined and are connected to, which was their portion. The portion of the Levites were to be joined. When these names are literally written on each stone, and it is worn on the chest of the high priest, which was Aaron. Then his two his firstborn sons, Nadab and Abihu, died by offering strange fire. So then it went to Eleazar and on and on, all the way till we get into uh, New Testament times to Annas and Caiaphas, that they were pure-blooded descendants of Aaron, which was the grandson of 
Levi, okay, serving under Kohath, which is where the word Kohathite or Kohenim comes from, which means priest. Now, this garment bearing the names in the place of prayer is literally, if you ever had someone said, you're upon my heart, or you're a, you've come upon my heart, or I feel a burden on my shoulders, this is exactly something, again, that is seen to represent something unseen. Now, if you're a priest, pastor, shepherd, bishop, elder, apostle, uh, even a teacher, and you are uh, praying for the people of the house of God, praying for the people all over the world, every once in a while you will feel what they say is a burden. Now, the Lord said don't call it a burden because it's a blessing. It's an assignment. It's a duty. It's a gift to take people to God and to receive revelation, direction, and deliverance, and then take it back to the people. They take problems to you, and you bring answers to them. And this is what is meant by, I feel weight on my shoulders. Now, when someone says, you were on my heart, or I am taking you on my heart before the Lord, this is an object lesson of what that exactly looks like to have literal names written upon stones that are worn on your heart in the presence of God. Now, Jesus said that whoever overcomes, I will give on him a white stone and write on him a new name. And this is an example of the white stone with a new name, which means that you will be so close to him, not by just proximity of relationship, like I know you, you know me, literally meaning that I can't forget about you like a wedding band. It is actually part of who I am now. It's part of my garment, which means it's on me whether I like it or not. It's on me so I don't forget it. And it's on me when I'm going into the place of prayer, into the place of intercession, into the place to break burdens and to trade tragedy for triumph and to bring Christ into crisis at such a time as this. Beloved, this is some of the responsibilities and duties of the priests of Israel who are now the believers of the Lord Jesus Christ, namely Jesus Christ, the high priest of our confession. This is the garment of the Kohen Gadol of the high priest. This is the garment that our King and God is wearing, and this is what it represents.